yeah, we may as well talk about feats. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. We are going on with the 5th edition Rune Knight build, and uh, thought it over, had some time to think on it, and well, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about feats. So, when it comes to feats, you select, you, the feats are an option for you to select anytime you get an ability score increase. The handy thing with this is, is that some feats will still give you a little bit of a, uh, an ability score increase to select on top of adding in some other abilities for you to make use of. But again, bear in mind these are an optional rule and your DM may not want to go with feats this time around, or at all. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure why they would 100% unless they're working with a new group of players, people who haven't uh, played any tabletop RPGs before, limiting the number of options might th make things just a little bit smoother and uh, make them less worried about, you know, uh, making characters that are broken, either broken overpowered or broken and kind of weaker and behind. But with all that said, let's go ahead and get into this. So, I've broken it up today between Dueling and Great Weapon Master, since Great Weapon Master was brought up and it is a really good option to combine with the Rune Knight. So, to begin with, we have feats for going Dueling. And to begin with, you're going to want to take Heavy Armor Master. This will allow you to increase your strength by one point, which is absolutely what you want, and any bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from non-magic weapons is reduced by three. Now, this is a feat that is arguably best taken early on, although I think it does retain a certain amount of usefulness later because, well, depending on how often magic weapons come up or you're being attacked by things that count as magic weapons, you're still going to get some mileage out of this because the lower level mobs, monsters, encounters that you might face on the way to the big bad evil guy or gal is, are there not all going to be equipped with magic weapons or buffed by magic so that their weapons count as magic weapons. So you'll still be taking damage off of the hits that they land on you and at early levels this is especially important so that you can keep fighting without having to burn all of your abilities up front. And then we also have the resilient feat and you take this for either dexterity or wisdom or both uh, if you feel the need to do so. You increase the chosen stat by one. You gain proficiency in saving throws for the chosen ability. Now, dexterity we're not focusing on a whole lot. In wisdom, I said we should try to keep pumped up at least a little bit just for the sake of uh, uh, being able to be perform better with uh, those various saving throws. And so to this end, the fact that you can gain proficiency with either of these or both if you take the feat twice then this really does a lot to increase her survivability. You'll have you'll be able to survive better against, you know, fireball spells. You'll have a good deck saving throw or any charm effects that might come away your way. You'll have a better wisdom saving throw to roll now. And then lastly, I would also recommend skill expert in athletics. You increase any stat by one, so ideally your strength or constitution, and you can gain proficiency in any skill. So you can take some of those skills that your various runes uh, buff up that normally you don't have a proficiency in. And you can choose one skill, and that skill gains double your proficiency bonus on skill checks. Athletics seems like a pretty solid choice, especially if you decide to factor in any kind of grappling. Say you drop your shield and you want to grapple the target. Then you can take your sword and just start running it through the target repeatedly if you have any extra attacks. And in order to try to get away from you, they have to either break your grapple or you know use some kind of magic. And that's going to be kind of a dicey proposition with a large-sized angry fighter in your face stabbing you. And uh, you use athletics to maintain that grapple. So definitely very 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 useful especially if you're say i don't know a goliath that gains uh, a, a significant amount of bonus to athletics and everything with your high strength as well this is all the way awesome but then we go on from there to great weapon fighting and the feats that you want to select for this are polearm master to begin with you 
when you're using either glaive, halberd, quarterstaff, or spear, or just, you know, your general polearm weapons, you use a bonus action to make a melee attack with the opposite end, and it deals 1d4 damage. And this also includes your strength modifier, so your strength modifier goes in with that. Creatures that enter your reach provoke attacks of opportunity. Now, that uses your reaction, so bear in mind with this feed, uh, you are using your bonus action and your reactions, both of which your rune abilities rely on, as well as a couple of other abilities. So, this definitely is a little bit of a game in resource management at this point. You have to choose what seems to be like the best tactical opportunity at that time. Although, if you've burned through your runes for the day, or your rune usage for the day, then, uh, you know, that's significantly less of an issue, and this still gives you options down the line. And then, we also have Sentinel. Creatures in your reach provoke attacks of opportunity, even if they use the disengage action. When you hit with an attack of opportunity, the target speed is reduced to zero. When a creature in your reach makes an attack against another target who doesn't have this feat, you use your reaction to make a melee attack against the attacking creature. So again, this is another one where your attacks of opportunity are using up reactions and you can use your reaction to make melee attacks against other creatures. So this helps to really up your your combat damage output, but again, this can end up limiting your rune ability uses. So use wisely, use carefully, but it is effective and works really great with pole arms. And to couple that with the fact that you can increase your size to either large or huge, and you're really establishing a lot of battlefield control. And then lastly, we have Great Weapon Master. You make an attack with a heavy weapon at a minus 5 penalty for a plus 10 damage bonus, and pole arms count as heavy weapons. When you score a crit and you reduce the target to 0 hit points, you can make one melee attack as a bonus action. So another one that's eating into your bonus actions, which go into your rune abilities, but this is a pretty significant damage output. So if you know you're fighting targets with a low armor class, this will really do a lot to boost how much damage you're doing. And bear in mind that with the Polearm Master, Great Weapon Master applies both for the bladed end and the back end that you strike with. So that's a minus five penalty for both of those attacks, but a plus 10 damage each. So at minimum, you're going to be dealing 22 damage plus whatever your strength modifier is. If you're following this guide and you have a 16, or and it's, it hasn't increased, then you're looking at a minimum of 25 damage if both those attacks hit. And that's just, you know, one attack and then the back end. And that doesn't even factor in if you decide to make another attack. So that's another attack in the back end there. So that's four attacks total, and you can really start to see how the damage escalates here very, very, very quickly. So, these are just some of the feat selections that you can make. Certainly there are others. There's feats like Lucky or Shield Master, and numerous others that really don't have the most to do with combat. There's the feat Prodigy, which works great if you're going with a human room knight, as it's one of the prerequisites, elf, half-elf, or human. That gives you bonus proficiency with tools, uh, uh, expertise with the skill and a bonus language, which really does a lot to round out just how capable your character can become. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Hit that like or dislike button and we'll engage in discussion. And if you haven't done so already, go on down there and hit the subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamers Den and join that legendary roster. But with all that said, thank you so very much for your time and you all have yourselves a good night.